Hey, have you ever had to be under the leadership of someone you felt probably shouldn't have been in a leadership position in the first place? Been there. Yeah, kind of a kind of a tough one. Maxwell says everything rises and falls on leadership. And that's why having the correct the right people in leadership is crucial. Important. So very important. So today we want to tackle this topic kind of a continuation of our last episode, really, yes. um, on identifying potential leaders, what to look for, you know, how to look for it. Uh, so we're going to kind of walk through, give a little bit of a recap, and then begin uh, again to kind of dive into this area of identifying potential leaders and trying to get the right people in the right place. Yeah, I think the worst leader I ever had, who should not have been a leader, but it was his business after all. <laughs> so, <laughs> Often the way it goes. Yeah, in college I worked for a uh, landscaper tree surgeon, former uh, Army drill sergeant mm. kind of guy, served in Vietnam, um, would give you um, the shirt off his back after he's known you for five or six years. Um, but until then, it was do this, don't argue, go this way. Um, very militant. Very militant, authoritative, really didn't care about your personal life, really didn't want to try to connect, just out to get the job done, earn money, and move forward. It was all task oriented approach. So um, I tell you what, I lost <laughs> my first summer, first summer working for him. I lost 40 pounds because he really worked us hard. Mm. Um, so the, I think that was probably the worst leader I ever had. Let me let me ask you this, Bill. This is coming to my mind as we're jumping into this topic yet again. And I kind of want to, I don't know if this is a disclosure we should make or just, hey, we, we feel you, we understand. Yeah. But we're living in kind of a culture and a time where people's commitment to organizations and businesses and, what, and whatnot is, isn't where it used to be. And so do, should yeah. this, uh, how would this then affect how we're approaching leadership? And we're talking about connecting with people. I mean, why would leaders go out of their way to connect with someone they know may not even be around in two, in two years because there's a lack of commitment kind of from yeah. the greater populace, if that, if that makes sense. There is a dynamic today uh, that didn't exist back when I had my really bad leadership experience. I was in college at the time when I first started working for him in summers. But today, there's this dynamic of people looking for purpose, not just a good job, not just a great place to work, not just great people to work with, but something that provides a sense of meaning and purpose to life. Mm. Um, so there's that dynamic on top of it, which makes creating a healthy environment, a safe environment for your workers, your employees, your volunteers, whoever you're overseeing, your peers. Sometimes you're going to be a leader among peers as well. But being that person that creates that self-welcoming environment um, and then helping them find that purpose, right? Um that's going to be a unique skill set and maybe an episode we should cover how yeah. people discover their purpose, um, to be honest. So, yeah, it's it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, and I, and I think, too, for me, I'll answer my own question by saying, again, leadership, the way we're defining it, you know, influence, right, nothing more, nothing less, is in my mind we're approaching this whole non-committal type culture with the whole purpose of adding value to people. And that's a little bit different than obviously, like we've talked about before, the managing or, you Big know, some, some of the ways that people go about managing their businesses. And I know that it's a little bit different, but again, I, I like to slow down and, and reflect for myself because at the end of the day, regardless of whether people are, you know, committed to the organization or to me, um, for me, again, leadership is, is, is going to be a character question. Absolutely. And so I don't want um, other people's non-commitment to to affect who I am as a person and how I value them and how I lead them. Um, so that's kind of how I separate the two. But I wanted to make that disclosure because I understand how hard this is. You know, coming from a nonprofit kind of a church background, yep. there is a lack of commitment. You know, people can just go grab a new church the same way they can go grab a new job. 
you know, yeah. and that's uh, and it's not, not just in churches; it's in a lot of volunteer organizations. I have a Across friend the board, yeah. uh, who, or you know, part of the Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, volunteers, and getting people to be engaged in in getting parents to be yeah. engaged in the process and volunteer. Very difficult. Yeah, Very yeah. Difficult. Town boards, chamber yeah. of commerce, yeah. things All of, of that it. nature. Yeah. yeah, we're seeing it everywhere. But great, so, great. Well, let's you know, I know that's a rabbit trail, but I think a necessary one just to kind of disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, just a yeah. kind of disclaimer. But Bill, kind of give us a bit of a recap on that yeah. idea we talked about last episode. So as Jared mentioned, this connects to our last episode where we did a book review of the ideal team player, where he talks about three characteristics when they come together. By themselves, they're not very magical or, or any wow factor to them by any stretch of the organization uh, means. Um, but when you bring all three together in an individual, mm-hmm. it creates someone who really represents and acts out as an ideal team player. And just a quick refresher in those three things. Again, if they're missing two, they're not going to be very good. If they're missing even one, they may not necessarily be a very good team player. Go back, watch the previous episode if you would. I will link it in the description below. But the three characteristics were humble, hungry, and smart. And Mm -hmm. humble is a specific definition. C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia, C.S. Lewis, he was very much of a theologian, deep thinker, um, as well as being famous for writing his children's books. But he described humility is, humility isn't thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Mm -hmm. Right, you're not thinking less value of yourself, but the frequency you think about yourself is less. You put others first, so that's real humility. And Jerry and I both subscribe to that definition wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, hungry, hungry is just being hungry for more. Are you are you satisfied? Are you trying to accomplish more? Like you're in a position where you're uh, in a group in a work setting, trying to accomplish an objective. Are you going, can we do this better? Okay, we're 80% there, but can we get there to 95%? Mm -hmm. Or what hurdles are coming down the road that I can identify with myself and bring a solution without someone coming to ask me? I'm -hmm. I'm hungry. I'm I'm engaged. I'm participating. So that's hungry. And smart is that buzzword today is emotional intelligence. Um, Jared and I, I think we just look at it as maturity. Mm -hmm. Um, Just having... um, Smart people have a good judgment and intuition around the subtleties of group dynamics, Mm -hmm. basically is what it is, how to be able to interrelate within group dynamics in uh, an organization. So when you have those three together, those are key for me in identifying a key leader. And at at work, I, I, I do. I keep my eyes open for potential leaders. And like a foundation of the house, there's other leadership qualities you want in there. But those three, having someone just demonstrating those, the bare basic in, in harmony with one another, not perfect, not perfect with all three, but have a healthy dose of all three. Those are the ones, okay, that might be a leader. Let me take them to the next step, ask the next question mm-hmm. or whether or not they're going to be a leader. Yeah. And again, when, when you're looking at this through a leader who adds value to other people, right, who leverages influence well in that area... These three characteristics, you know, I feel personally, I know Bill does as well, are are going to be that foundation. They're going to be your starting point. And once you've found, you know, someone you think and looks pretty good that, you know, they have a good balance of these three yeah. these three characteristics, then you're going to be able to move on uh, to, to the other things that you need uh, to see. And I would say, too, that as you begin to think of identifying potential leaders, you know, we're going to give some bare bones, kind of some very practical things uh, to look for. Again, these three being the foundation. But Talk, Talking about, you know, disclaimer statements, there's one other one here that we should make before we go too much further is that if you're a leader, it's our job and responsibility to be identifying future leaders. Right. It is our responsibility to be working ourselves out of a job in the in regards to being a leader yeah, and raising, find someone to be capable, not that they will, but eventually capable of replacing us, that we are replicating. Mm. That's the top level of leader performance right there. Mm-hmm. Someone who is investing and duplicating themselves, their leadership skills into someone else. Yeah. That's why this episode is so important. Yeah, and, I, and again, I, I would look at this um, and another full disclaimer is you're going to have to filter how will this work for my organization? Absolutely. Uh, well, each of us are in a different leadership position. Yep. And so we're going to be applying these principles 
a little differently, I would assume. There's, you're going to have to come up, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, a system and a rhythm that works for your organization. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little so what's, bit. So we, we got Humble, Hungry, and Smart as the foundation to start. Uh, so, Jared, what's our next? Yeah, the next thing that you know, Bill and I have found that works really well is, is looking for peer acknowledgement. Right. And peer acknowledgement really is it's the, you want a person who is readily acknowledged by their peers, right, by how they treat him or her. Uh, it's kind of a what would they say about you type of a thing. Uh, you know, do others go to this person for advice, uh, for wisdom, for direction? Yep. Um, again, we've talked about it in, in previous episodes. There's leadership without a title. Right, and it kind of starts yeah, without a exactly. title. And so sometimes when you're identifying someone, it really is a potential leader. They don't have a title of leadership yet, but you're looking for someone who's acknowledged by their peers in such a way that they're already leveraging influence. Another way to ask this question is when you're not there, who does everyone else go to? Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of the key idea. And then you go, okay, are they humble, hungry, smart? All right, mm-hmm. then maybe we have a potential leader on our hands. Yeah. What reputation do they have among them peers? You know, they may be ones they go to to provide answers, but aren't very nice. You know, they don't have those people mm-hmm. skills, emotional intelligence. But um, so that's why these two are married together are, are keys for helping to identify leaders. Yeah. And I think, too, you know, this is one of those questions. You know, what do others say about this person's character You know, when they're not present? Right. You know, if somebody's talking to Bill about me or me about Bill, you know, I'm not in the room. You know, what are they saying to Bill about who, you know, Jared is? What's the gossip? You know, yeah. What's the gossip? You know, how does he how does he act around, you know, you and um, those kinds of questions. So really it becomes peer acknowledgement kind of with the filter of character in mind uh, because that's what you really are looking for. Humble, hungry, smart. Are they recognized by their peers? And if so, is it good? Is it bad? Is it healthy? Yeah. And what's their character? Yeah, is- and I, I challenge you to ask, you think about this question for yourselves as leaders. Um, how are other people talking about you? Mm-hmm. Um, what's your brand? What's the reputation that you leave? Mm-hmm. What's the the atmosphere you carry with you that gets left behind and people talk about? Um, I made an announcement at work at a gunch, uh, amongst a group of uh, fellow leaders, and I, I left the room and then I side chatted a friend who was still in the meeting. I said, okay, what's, what's the talk? Is that, mm-hmm. Was that a positive or a negative? Or what's the feedback? How could prove, do better, all that. Yeah. Uh, and he really gave me some insight about, okay, what am I leaving behind when I left the room? So mm-hmm. that's an important question to ask ourselves as leaders as we look for other leaders. Yeah, absolutely. And we, I mean, we have, obviously, we've talked about humility a lot. Yep. So, you know, we're going to, again, just reiterating that humility kind of is the lifeblood of leadership, right? Lifeblood of someone's character. It's the lifeblood of leadership. Right. It's kind of essential to good leadership. Uh, you must possess it, right? If you're going to remain a leader, um, you can be a boss, you can be a manager, you know, without a whole lot of humility, but you're not going to be able to be a leader without it. So right. you want to be looking for that, obviously. But there's, there's two more things we wanted to throw in here kind of make a call for, and they're teachability and courage. So we're going to kind of walk through these two principles as well. You've got, you know, humble, hungry, smart, um, but you also want someone who's recognized by their peers, is teachable, and they have courage too. Yeah. So we'll talk about what these what these two look like. But I think for teachability, for me, that starts with uh, our attitude, right? So for me as a person to remain teachable, that's an attitude question. Um, I, I can say I'm teachable, um, but how I present myself, you know, my very attitude, it's like, I mean, I coach uh, middle school girls softball, and we just got, uh, I think it was our third or fourth practice in, you know, spring training, we're on the field, um, and um, Coach B, good friend of mine, he was giving the, he's coached for many years, he's coached at the college level, he's coached T-ball all the way through, and he circled up the girls, um, and his his wife is also coaching with us. Um, and so he began to kind of give a beginning of the year speech on being teachable. Mm. And it was really interesting how he presented it because he went through the history of um, himself, who he played all the way through high school. He played he played baseball, so he knows the game. Um, he's coached softball before. And, and he looked at his wife who was, I mean, his wife was pitching uh, no hitters in high school. And then she went on to pitch for uh, softball for, for college and did well. 
And, you know, so they have kind of stellar careers. And I, myself, he looked at me and said, you know, and, and, and Coach Jared, you know, he played all the way through high school. And and his whole speech led up to this moment where he says, okay, so I can guarantee you we know more than you do. And, it, and the girls are kind of looking up. And he's kind of a big guy and he's really always smiling. And it was kind of a moment of, wow, you know, that's it, it's a call out. There's always somebody out there who knows a little bit more than you do, always. has a little bit more experience, a little always. bit more polish, probably better at what they're they're doing than you are. Yeah. And so there's a teachable attitude that we need to bring as leaders ourselves, yeah. but also something you want to look for in other people. Yeah. Every time I have an interaction with a leader at work, I walk away, okay, what was the lesson learned? Whether it's something about policy, procedure, or content or how they approached uh, another individual or handled a meeting or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. I'm always, always looking for opportunities. And, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes I'm tired and I don't want to look and I just want to get through my day and, mm -hmm. and it's an effort, you know, and sometimes I, I fail at <laughs> doing it. Mm -hmm. But there, it's a current that exists um, day in and day out as it I is. go through about watching other leaders yeah, yeah for yeah, sure absolutely for sure so yeah teachability begins with attitude um you know again humble hungry smart is one thing um uh peer acknowledgement is number two number three is these three characteristics we're revisiting humility and teachability and courage re-emphasizing re humility because it's as you said it's lifeblood yep. you know you can't not not have it yeah, it to be really, a good leader. it really, really is. And then teachability. Um, what was? <laughs> have you ever had a leader who just couldn't learn that one lesson that they just kept repeating the same mistake over and over again? Mm -hmm. They kept treating the people the same way. They kept having this blind spot that they just stumbled through and walked over people, hurt people. Um, Usually or it's damage the organization yeah. by the choices made. No, right? for sure. I mean, usually when you have a, it's easier to see the lack of teachability in other people than it is yourself. Yeah. That's just true of all life. But I remember working with certain individuals, you know, above you, outranking you, so to speak, you know, higher positionally, um, who would do exactly that simply because they didn't come up with the idea they would do things the same way. Even if somebody brought forth a better idea. And that, right, is a lack of humility. It's a lack of teachability. It's a lack of personal growth. I mean, you, the, yes. I mean, the list is endless. But it's really interesting because Maxwell has this quote. He says, good attitude among players does not guarantee a team's success, but a bad attitude guarantees its failure. And it's so key to teachability. It really is all about attitude. You know, whenever we're confronted, our initial response is defensive. The pride that maybe shame if we'd made a mistake rises up. And the question is, do we have the capacity to, you know, with effort, shut that down to hear the facts, maybe that golden nugget of truth that's in there somewhere that we can go, okay, most of that might have been junk, but there was a gold nugget of truth. I need to change. I have have to have a course correction mm -hmm. with that piece of truth going forward. And am I willing to receive it and then exercise or uh, excise that or act on that, I should mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So that that's really yeah. what teachability is. There's another Maxwell quote. Um, again, we're John, thank you. Uh, yeah. Leadership guru that you are. We're not worthy, but Thank please, you for paving the path. Please come be a guest on our show. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Maxwell said, if you want to be successful tomorrow, then you must be teachable oh. today. What got you to where you are won't keep you there. Mm. And it certainly won't take you where you want to go. Yeah. So yeah. very, very true. You know, when I first came across the quote and then thought back about my years of experience as different leader positions, absolutely true. I'm, yeah. I can't think of a time when that did not was not applicable. Right. Right. It's one of those truisms that's just carried the test of time. Mm. So, so teachable, yeah. very key. Uh, that's enough on that one. We're going to move on to courage. Yeah. Um, How would you define courage? I mean, yeah, gonna... this is this is what I came up with a definition for courage. Um, there's many out there, but for me, courage is doing the right thing the right way at the right time, despite how inconvenient it may be, or hurtful, or dangerous, or, mm. you know, the right thing, the right way, at the right time. And courage can be, um, I was recently coaching a team who had a big morale problem, 
And I just said, okay, let's go back to basics. Let's just do the right thing the right way at the right time. Are you treating your peers, your customers, your manager, your neighboring teams? Are you doing the right thing the right way at the right time? Mm -hmm. And it took a good six months before we started seeing a turn in attitude Mm -hmm. by just focusing on that mantra. Um, Courage you know, if you're going to be a leader, there are going to be things that you're going to have to step into, you know, is the right thing to do, but you just don't want to do it because it may be hard. It may be difficult, maybe uncomfortable, maybe embarrassing. Maybe you have to go ask forgiveness for something you did. And that was really stupid and shameful. Um, could be a number of things, a number of things, right? Maybe you're stepping out and leading the team in a direction you've never done before. So you're going out of your comfort zone, Mm -hmm. but it's what's best for the team for you to do that. So courage, humility, teachable, teachability, and courage are three fundamental characteristics you want to be looking for in a potential leader. So Mm -hmm. to review a little bit, humble, hungry, smart is the foundation. Um, What are the other peers are saying about them yeah, when they're much, but, yeah. when you're not around, you know what's their um, brand that they're leaving, their atmosphere they're leaving behind, what others are saying about them, and then you know again humility, teachability, and courage. Mm. Um, those are the key areas. People with courage are able to take risks and stay motivated oh, and inspire yeah. others. Yes, that's why courage is so important. You know, when you think of someone who is that inspires you, did they have to exercise courage even in the smallest way? Well, yeah, of course. And I bet you you could probably think of several examples where they had to do that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, Derwin Gray, a former uh, NFL player, he says, a vision of the future transforms what you do today. And, you know, one of the reasons we're coming around this whole idea of, you know, what it looks like and, and how to identify potential leaders, you know, for one, um, you know, this – this gives Bill and I, you know, a vision for what could be. And, Man. you know, it's it's one of those things where if you have a good vision of the future, it's going to transform what you do today. It's something we're and, passionate about is growing yeah. and, and, and developing leaders ourselves. Yeah. You know, let me ask you this question. Do you think the world needs, is the world in a condition where it's all set and doesn't need any more good leaders? No, of course not. Yeah. We are in desperate need of good leader, great leaders, yeah. leaders that exercise courage in these other attributes. For yeah, sure. Absolutely. So. Yeah. And Maxwell has another quote. We'll throw this one in here too, just because we can, you know, you, you teach what you know and you reproduce who you are. Mm. So when you teach, again, you teach what you know, you reproduce who you are. And that's so important when you're identifying leaders, because as Bill kind of started this, this episode, with that that thought of, you know, you you want to be able to reproduce yourself. That's why identifying leaders is so important. So if you're looking at someone that you're going to give a leadership position to, that person is who others are going to become. Yeah. And that's kind of hopefully, right? If you can yeah. lead well and lead this person well and they in turn can lead others, right? This person and his characteristics or her characteristics are going to rub off on to the people that are, are that they're leading. The law of the lid, as yeah, Maxwell talks right. about. If you're functioning as a leader at, you know, at a scale one to ten, you're at a seven, you're not going to reproduce eight level eight leaders. Yeah. You're going to reproduce level six leaders no higher as long as you stay at level seven. So that's the other element of this of why it's so important for us to grow ourselves as leaders. We reproduce who we are. Right. So and the question I gotta ask myself, I hope you do too, is what am I producing is it of quality? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not perfection. None of us are perfect. But yeah. is it, are, am I growing? Am I getting better? Is the quality improving? Yeah. So. My dad talks a lot about leaving a legacy. Yeah. You know, which is probably a, an episode for another day. Yeah. But he, uh, you know, that's kind of his mantra. And that, you know, is, is encouraging because he, his thinking in that aspect is, you know, anybody can have a reputation and, you know, leave an impression, but can you leave a legacy, hmm. which is a little bit different. So yeah. you teach what you know, you reproduce who you are. And again, the challenge, you know, we want to give you guys and the challenge that Bill and I are kind of walking in the midst of right now, uh, what we're trying to tackle day in and day out is developing a system and rhythm to identifying potential leaders. Again, you're in a different situation than we're in. Um, and so 
We want you to be able to understand, hey, if I'm looking for humble, hungry, smart, if I'm looking for someone, right, peer recognized, if someone has that humility, that teachability and that courage, um, and, and I'm going to put them into place, again, develop a system and a rhythm that works for you and for your leaders. And if you're working with a team, you know, drop this this episode to them, let them partake as well. We'd love to hear from you guys on that. Yeah. Um, but again, it may look a little different for you. So develop a system and a rhythm to identifying potential leaders. Yeah, just to comment there, the system, the methodology, find you, each of you will have your own unique gifts, talents, experiences, personalities, find a, a, a system that works for you, but make it a rhythm of your life mm-hmm. that you are on that out, you know, look out for potential leaders. The radar is always up and looking. So that's mm-hmm. what we talk about when we say, or what we mean when we say system and rhythm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So thanks so much, yeah. you know, guys, for hanging out, for joining us. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to seeing you next time. Yeah, if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe. Uh, and if you, please leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you and interact with you. And if you have a topic you'd like us to talk on, please drop it in the comments. We appreciate you. Have a great day. See you next time.